teacher Mindy here. I just wanted to update you. I have my first out school classes today. I taught two sections of the same class. And what my class was, I wanted to start out fairly simple, just to get my feet wet and figure out the whole out school platform and figure out how this whole thing goes. So what I did is I did, um, First, they introduced themselves, they twirled around, introduced their dolls that they brought. It was a princess tea party, so they were dressed in their very finest dresses. Um, and they said what state they were from, just kind of did a little introduction, how old they are, etc. Then I went over my little tea party etiquette, manners, rules. So I had 10 rules up there. And for future, I'm gonna cut that down to just five. 10 was a little too much for the kids to sit there and listen through. And I tried to put them more in a, not all like don't slurp your tea, which some of them were, um, but I tried to also put a little bit of a spin of have fun and showed some examples of what not to do to get everybody laughing and having a little bit of fun. Um, so that's how we started. And then I also showed them the scone that I made for my snack at the tea party. So they all had their doll, they had their snacks, and they had their tea. So I showed them the scone that I made for the tea party and I posted the scone recipe. So after class was over, they could go back, get the recipe, get the tea party manners, and they could practice with their own tea parties at home. And then I read them the book, Sophia the First, The Perfect Tea Party. So what I found out in my first class is this is kind of a lengthy book for age four to eight was my age range, four to eight. Um, and all of my students who signed up were between age four and six, four and five were the most popular. But a couple of things that I changed for the second class, I should have it maybe a little bit more interactive like you do when you're teaching VIP kids. So when it came to time where they saw the butterfly and the little secret garden, I had the butterflies like flapping across the screen and showing them some pretty butterflies while I was reading. Um, I also, for the second one, introduced my craft so they could go ahead and start working on their craft while I was reading the book. So it kept them a little bit busy as far as they were decorating their crowns, either coloring or putting gems on them. And then the other thing that they made was a wand. So I was had them decorating their star and this is just wrapping paper. So they were gluing the wrapping paper on their paper towel tube the empty paper towel roll tube is how we made those um so i adjusted that and then they got to have a visit by a princess and the princess was a surprise they had to close their eyes and poof the princess appeared and the princess was actually my daughter claudia all dressed up i'll put a picture in and she had her little puppy in her little princess um, dress and she had a little bow in her hair as well. So they got to meet the princess, ask the princess any questions that they had. Um, and then that was pretty much it. So that was our full 40 minutes. So in the first class, my friends, I had two friends that had their girls in the class. So three of the four girls belonged to my two friends and they gave me the feedback about having to do the craft during the story, because the story was a little bit long. Totally agree with that. It was a little bit long for that age. Um, and then we um, had the fourth student in the class. She ended up having to leave early because she got her hand a little smushed by the stapler when she was working on her craft, so she left a little bit early but she still was there during meeting the princess and reading the book. It was just the craft part that she left a little bit early on. We did have a pretty chatty group. You know, they were, they chatted enough. My second class, the group 
it was only one student. The second student didn't show and she was very chatty <laughs> where I had to like keep getting back on track with her. But you know, that's part of it. You're having a tea party, you're socializing, you're visiting and having fun. So I was able to allow her to be chattier than if we were in a bigger group because it was just her. So she had a lot that she could interact with even more. I'm sure she would have had more fun interacting with other kids, but the other one didn't show. So, and my limit that I have on it is from two to five learners. So I had two learners enrolled. So I went ahead and went with the class. If you, without school, if you don't meet your minimum, you can always cancel your class. But I decided I really wanted to go with my class and um, get, just get some more experience with the platform and using it. So the other thing that I learned is be very careful when you open up that camera. So as soon as you hop on out school, so for my second class, I hopped on a little bit early. I wanted to check where you turn on that bell to ring when someone's in the waiting room. So I couldn't quite figure that out with the first one and we were waiting for one student to come. So I was looking and figuring all that out while my camera was on, so when I'm figuring all that out, you know, when you're like trying to think of stuff and you're trying to figure things out and getting your last minute stuff set up and prepped, that's all on camera. And so my crazy faces I was making was all on camera. I'm gonna include a little section of that at the end, just so you can see what you see on the camera. I would recommend a sticky note over your camera until you actually admit students into your classroom because of course you're going to want to go in early and kind of play around and get adjusted and make sure the internet's all set up and ready to go. Um, the other thing is, oh my goodness, on my playback I look so pale and you just have to put apply extra makeup for Zoom meetings. VIP kid, we are so used to having the beauty filter on the side. And with the beauty filter, if you're looking kind of pale that day, you just crank that thing up and you look like you have some makeup on. But in Zoom, oof, you look really pale. Or maybe it's my new external camera that made me look so pale, but I did look quite pale. And you know, it's Texas, I have a tan and been sitting outside, but I just didn't really look um, as made up as I felt like I was. The other crazy thing about makeup is I wanted to look extra princess-like. So you can tell I put a little glitter eyeshadow on. And that glitter keeps getting in my eye while I was teaching. That was kind of annoying. So I think the next um, princess tea party, we will skip the glitter on my eyes. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much it. Everything went great. It was a lot of fun. It was really enjoyable to teach something that I'm passionate about. I grew up having tea parties with my mom. My kids have grown up having tea parties with my mom and with us. And that was just something that's always been fun to do when we were young as a tea party. So that part was really fun. Yes, it was a lot of work to prep and get the class ready, but now I can teach it as many times as I want and the work's all done. It's Everything's all prepped and ready to go. So if you're interested in taking a class with OutSchool, I will leave my link below that you can click on and you can take a free class up to $20 with OutSchool. So OutSchool has classes anywhere from dissecting a pig's heart to writing high school English papers, getting ready for college prep tests, um, or the ACT, SAT, those college tests that they take, um, to how to play Minecraft and all sorts of just a huge, huge range of classes. And OutSchool does provide great training for their teachers to get them ready for their first class. 
So if you're interested in teaching or if you're interested in your children taking classes this summer, just hit the link below and enjoy. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up and share, subscribe, like, all that good stuff to help make my YouTube channel grow just a little bit more. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Hello princesses, this is teacher Mindy here and I would like to invite you to my royal tea party. Bring your favorite doll or a stuffed animal and come to my tea party where we will learn tea party manners and drink a nice cup of tea together. Bring your favorite snack. I will be bringing my favorite scones. And at the end of the tea party, I'll even include a recipe so you can make scones at your own home. The tea party manners will also be a printout for you to have at home so you can practice having tea parties with your family and friends for fun. During the tea party, we will be making two different crafts. We'll be making this crown and you'll have a template on your class page to print out for the crown. If you don't have access to a printer, you can always draw a crown on a piece of paper. But what you can also do is print this out, trace it onto fun foam like I did, and that just makes it a little bit sturdier. This part of the crown is for the front, and these two bands are just to make this little band around the back. So you can print it, trace it onto fun foam, or print it directly onto cardstock, either one. If you don't have access to a printer, just draw it freehand. It's totally fine. Here's some cardstock I would recommend. The next thing you're going to need to do is print or draw two stars. We'll be making this fun wand together. And with this wand, all I used for the base is a recycled paper towel roll. And I took some wrapping paper and I applied my very fast drying sticky glue all over it. Put my paper towel roll in, rolled it up and glued it together. If you don't have any glue handy, not a big deal. You can use a stapler to staple it quickly together. Then for the stars, you're going to decorate it with gems or markers or whatever you have, stickers, whatever you want to use to decorate your star and your crown. And that gets cut out of cardstock or fun foam also. And then we're going to be stapling it onto our wand base, which is the paper towel holder. So on your supply list, 
If you want to do some coloring, you need to have some markers. If you want to glue or tape, that would be great too. Or you could even just use a stapler to make the whole thing. Your choice of what you have at home. You might need some scissors if you need to still cut things out. If you already have it cut out ahead of time, then you won't need any scissors. If you don't have an empty paper towel roll, not a problem. You can easily make a base for your wand by just taking a piece of paper and rolling it up diagonally like this, putting a dot of glue here, and this can be your wand base and then you can adhere your stars onto that. Super quick and easy. So while you're making your craft, I'm going to be reading to you Sophia the First, The Perfect Tea Party. You're going to learn all about how Sophia plans her very first tea party in this class. You will also have a visit at the end from a very special princess and her friend. So I hope you can attend and see you soon at this wonderful enchanted royal princess party. Bye, have a great day.